Hey, it's good to have you here. Come on in, have a seat. Welcome to the Beyond Picket Fences podcast. We are your hosts, Mandy Benicky and Naomi Marquez. Today, we welcome Laura Goldstein back to our table. You may remember Laura from episode six when she helped us unwrap white privilege and from the bonus episode about vulnerability on our Patreon page. Laura is an internal family systems therapist and she has been in professional practice assisting families, couples, and individuals since 1996. Laura obtained her BA in psychology at Denison University in Ohio and her master's degree in social work from Hunter College in New York. She is a member of the National Association of Social Workers. In her personal life, Laura is a lover of nature, her friends and family, music, and yoga. Today, Laura talks to us about working harder in these times to create balance and boundaries. After the show, please refer back to our show notes or go directly to the Beyond Picket Fences YouTube channel where the amazing Nicole Dorn, yoga instructor and local studio owner of Love Junkie Yoga and Fitness Studio, graciously offered to record an exclusive video for our community on breath work and alternate nostril breathing, which Laura will mention in the episode. Now I've talked your ear off enough, so let's just get to it. Let's welcome the amazing Laura Goldstein. Hi, Naomi. Hey, Mandy. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> Nothing. I'm just in the tiniest of closets. I'm up in Winter Park. Um, my I got away with my family for a week. I was supposed to go. I told you I was supposed to go to Oregon yeah. uh, a week ago and, you know, COVID, so I couldn't go. Um, so we were able to get a place up in the mountains just to come hibernate for fall break. So I'm in that. the tiniest of closets. How are you but, feeling, by the way? Anyway. How are you I'm doing better. I'm not 100%. I got some weird lingering side effects, but other than that, I'm doing pretty good. So good, good, good to hear. Good to yeah. hear. Family's good. Family's Nobody's good. come down. They're That's healthy. good. Good, God. good, good. Yeah. Hey, well, we're excited to have Laura back. Yeah. Hi, Laura. Hi from the closets. Hi from <laughs> closet number two. We're all in the closets. How are you doing, Laura? Hi, being in the closet. I'm um, honestly, I'm, I'm today I'm good, but it has been, it's been bumpy. It's been rough and depleting. Well, we're That's excited really to, um, <laughs> yeah, depleting. We're, we're excited that you reached out to us about the podcast and we'd love yes. to hear what you want to chat about. So self-care, is that what we're, the topic of today is? Self-care. And I think this came up. Yeah. Thank you guys for doing this. I know we kind of put this together last minute. I think the time is really appropriate as it's been draining, um, really, really draining in my world um, as a therapist and working a lot, feeling really depleted, feeling really drained. Um, And my balance and boundaries have been off. So that was last week's theme seemed to come up over and over again in my own life in my daughter's life, family's life, and clients around how to have stronger boundaries and more balance. So that's where I got the brainstorm. And Naomi, you were very helpful in that too, in that um, after our conversation in terms of saying, what can we do? What can I do now? What can I do now? Being that we have good routines, but we need to be doing more right now. We need to, we need to work harder. That's what came out. Like we need to work harder now at balance and boundaries in this most uncertain time. Yeah. You know, we had the conversation because I was really struggling with not understanding why I couldn't get the right energy level, higher vibration, feeling like I had um, a path that day energetically that was going to give me the results that I wanted that day, right? And I was really struggling and I was doing my, I wake up in the morning, I do my notebooks, I have Zen music on, I meditate, I um, do affirmations every morning. I have a very strong routine that I stick to no matter where I am. I have a very strong routine during the day where I walk a lot, I get up, I move, I make sure that I am constantly um, checking my mental 
state and making sure my head's not stuck in a computer or stuck in a phone and really listen to podcasts during the day or listen to audiobooks, which stimulates me. And at night, I love that down time listening to um, Navajo wind music and just getting lost in you know that energy. And it hasn't been working for the last three weeks or four weeks. And when we spoke, I was awakened during our conversation. I realized that I have to do more to keep my mental, physical, you know, spiritual self healthy. And yep. it wasn't until we spoke that I realized that what I used to do isn't enough anymore. And mm -hmm. so when you text and were like, let's have this conversation, it was like, yes, so many people are probably feeling that. And with you, Mandy, and everything you've gone through and your family, you also were like, yeah. I'm yeah, in it's interesting space. because um, I actually really thrived um, when, you know, in the first few months of COVID um, because I'm very introverted. And I really like my own personal time. And so it was, it was nice because I got to get rid of all of the external um, expectations placed on me because my calendar was wiped clean and that felt really freeing for me. Um, but then as the, the months went on, <clears throat> a couple of things started happening. Um, for self-care, I was really into yoga and I would go probably five to seven times a week to the studio. And that was really my outlet mentally. Um, and I can't, I couldn't do that anymore. Um, it was offered at home, but it's just not the same. There's, you know, kids and housework and things like that that are there. So it just wasn't the same. And then I also used to walk um, three miles a day just to clear my head and listen to books. And um, and lately I haven't been able to do that, one, because it's smoky here in Colorado, and two, because I have COVID, so I can't walk that far. Um, and the other aspect is because I am so introverted and missing out on that, um, that time alone, I've been in my house with my family. So I've had people around me constantly. And that is really wearing on me. Um, and then, you know, I'm, I'm homeschooling my kids for eight hours a day. And that's something that, that I'm, you know, completely not used to. So it's just yeah. a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. You know, we, we talk about, you know, I had um, two family members that passed back to back unexpectedly. And, you know, having to get up and travel and go out and help and, and, navigating through, you know, working remotely is great. We've all been able to do it. We've all figured it out. Right. But it's, it's taking that space and time to be able to take what works for you in a structured environment and then putting it in a non-structured environment and being able to maintain all of that. And I think all of us, and to Mandy's point, I have actually done really well in COVID. I have thrived in COVID surprisingly, and I'm an extrovert and I love being around people, but it's shown me I can be happy not having all that where I'm struggling right now is all the emotion that comes along with the normals of life. People die, but the changes that happen because of COVID and you can't mourn the way you used to. There's no gatherings of support like you used to. It's not easy to prepare everything for a death like you used to, you know, there, all the things that are normal when you're going through the grieving process aren't there right? And you think about how many people have had to experience death and haven't had that ability to follow the normalcy, I guess, of when people pass and how you kind of go through the grieving process. Think about people who've had babies and haven't had the support they need, who've been stuck in the hospital, you know, people who, who even schooling, right? Just like what Mandy said, you know, kids not being able to go to school and that normalcy and all of that. So uh, walk us through, Laura, kind of your thoughts on boundaries and balance. Yes. The, and we're in a pandemic. I mean, that we're still in a pandemic. And I think that's what we need to remember is, you know, Naomi, when we were speaking, it was like, why isn't this working? Why aren't my skills and tools working? Is we need to remember we're still in a pandemic and it's continuing with all this uncertainty. It's creating more anxiety. We don't know when it's going to end and we don't have we don't have a forecast. So we don't have a schedule. We don't have anything to look back on and say, oh, right. 
I know how this ends because we don't know. Um, you know, with nature right now, it's it's interesting. That's been really helpful for me, noticing that cha- life is still progressing as I see the, ch- the trees change and I walk outside. I'm like, right, okay, life is still progressing. When I wake up every day, sometimes I'm not sure, you know, that groundhog day, like we're here, we're doing the mm-hmm. same thing over and over, which is really anxiety producing. Um, but then if I, as we talk about balance, is I go outside and I rem- I'm reminded by the trees changing and the weather getting a bit cooler, I'm like, okay, right, life is still happening. Um, but our schedules are all off. And, you know, Mandy, you're talking about homeschooling, which is throwing everybody off. You know, I'm seeing it with teenagers all, you know, how hard it is for teenagers on some level, you would think it's easier because you don't have to help them as much, um, except a lot of teenagers are really struggling in terms of navigating how to be the most productive, how not to get distracted, especially if kids who are struggling with, you know, ADD and navigating online, it's really, really, really challenging. So we're in a pandemic and we're in this racial reckoning that's still happening. And we have this election that's coming, all these external forces that are still you know, very, very consuming to us in our energy, in our emotions. Um, so we do need to work harder. We need to work harder and work harder at what you do know. And Naomi, I can speak about what you are saying is you do have really good coping skills. You have really high functioning coping skills to keep yourself centered and grounded. And Mandy, you were speaking of what you used to do, go to yoga um, and be outside and walk and listen to audiobooks. And those are some awesome skills. We need to do more of them, meaning take more time doing them. Um, I myself too, yoga is a huge part of my practice to keep sane and keep grounded. Um, doing yoga at home is I'm super distracted and my brain, I can't, I can't even finish a whole hour. Um, Mm -hmm. online doing it that way. So my balance has, I have to work harder at my balance and also at the boundaries. So those are those two things, balance and boundaries. Um, and the reminder too, that's, so I say that again, like the reminder that like, oh, right. Okay. People are all suffering right now. You guys are talking about thriving, which is amazing. It's great that you're thriving during a pandemic. That is not the case for, Mm -hmm. for many, for many people right now. Mm -hmm. Um, and the fact that you're saying that, Mandy, you have COVID and you're thriving um, is really a testimony to you, I would say, for sure. <laughs> I think I was thriving before, not so much now. <laughs> <laughs> now it's so much now. So yeah. let's do, let, how about balance? I mean, balance is a word that I think is, you know, if you have a balance practice, a balance practice, whether it's with exercise and food and sleep and community and friends and nature versus, you know, in, in you're talking about introverted and extroverted. If you know that about yourself, that you know what your balance of all of those things are, then wonderful. But you need to attune more, do them, give more time to each one of those things. And if you don't have, if you don't know what that means. If you're hearing us talk about balance, you're like, that's a great word, but what is that for myself? And I've never had balance and I feel like I'm spinning on all ends right now. How can we create balance and how can we help people create some tools to learn how to balance yourself in terms of, and when I say balance yourself, we're ta- not talking about standing on one foot, doing yoga and one foot for an hour, balance your energy, balancing your mood, uh, balancing your emotions. Mm-hmm. You know, we talked about after we spoke uh, last week, I think it was something that helped me was scheduling. I was like, okay, I know how many steps I'm going to have by this time of the day. I know what I'm going to do for work. My calendar's full. I said, okay, I'm going to schedule my meditation time. I'm going to do more of that. Even if it's just five minutes, I'm going to spend less time on my phone, less time on my computer. Put my putting myself to bed 30 minutes earlier just to rest my mind. And I had to just do a little bit more. And I'm going to tell you, Laura, it has been fantastic. Fantastic. And I know that once this works, if it happens again, I'm just going to have to add in a little bit more me time. Just me clearing my thoughts, focusing on my energy, and not filling my day full of action items and allowing mm-hmm. more space and time to do that self-care that I do. So 
what are your thoughts about scheduling that time? I think it's amazing. If you're someone who likes schedule, um, I think that's a great way to to create what you need. Then that's, you know, for you, you know yourself in that way. You know that yourself, you like schedules. So you can, if you need to schedule more meditation and not, and you say just five minutes, five minutes is, is great. Five minutes of meditation is actually really challenging. So adding five more minutes is amazing. And five minutes less on social media is also amazing. And five minutes less of CNN is also amazing because it's the same thing. And we get fueled by that energy, which for me is um, really, it's, it's just been depressing and depleting and sad and frustrating and feeling really, really hopeless and helpless when mm-hmm. I do too much of that. So creating that space of five minutes more, 10 minutes more of me time where I'm breathing and pausing and not having the distractions of computers and phones and TVs um, and even podcasts. And I had to, uh, you know, cause I crashed is what happened is I really crashed and was in that fetal position of just could not move. And there's where I realized that my, you know, my balance and boundaries were just off. Both of those were completely off. So knowing yourself is, is the, is the first thing. And what is that? Um, How do we, how do we know ourselves? How do we learn ourselves in just a more basic way is we, we talk about meals and food often, Um, you know, what are we eating for breakfast, lunch, and dinner snacks? It's a preparation thing, especially if you have family and people around you. So can you extend that to yourself? which is a minimum of three times a day, kind of checking in morning, midday and evening and asking yourself, how am I right now? Ask yourself, am I feeling depleted? Am I feeling anxious? Am I feeling balanced? Am I feeling joyful? Am I feeling grateful? Asking these questions, am I feeling angry? How do we know what that is? And it, 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 you have to practice. That's a definite practice that we need to learn about ourselves, which requires asking, wow, I'm feel, have I, what is my sleep schedule? What is my food schedule? What is my exercise? My ratio of friends and family, community, as little as we can have in social distancing, um, but, but being part of some sort of pod and community, I think is really, really important. Um, am I out in Can nature? we talk about that for a second? I think that, you know, it's something that as we talk about COVID and, and social distancing, human contact is so important and you can only have Zoom and FaceTime conversations for so long. Right. And, you know, everybody's got to find their own comfort zone with human interaction, but people need hugs. You know, I, I went up to Mandy and I'm like, I just need a hug. And she hugs me. <laughs> I'm like, I need that. Right. And even an introvert, Mandy, and we can, you know, you can speak up on this. You still need physical attention from people, even whether it's your physical touch is sitting next to each other and you just have great eye contact, right? Like that in itself is so needed and you can only do so much over a screen. So, you know, still practice social distancing and stay safe and stay healthy. But to your point, you want to find, you know, uh, um, somebody, somebody's that you all have the same social distancing practice that you guys feel comfortable being around each other and having that space and time with people. You can't be isolated for months after months after months. It, it's just, it, it, as a human, you can't. I think you have to be a little bit more creative with that too. You know, um, sorry, my phone just literally crashed. Uh, We're having an earthquake. Earthquake. We just just crashed. (laughs) But being more creative with, with um, getting together. Yes. Finding, finding people who are, you're comfortable physically being around. And um, early on in COVID, when we were not supposed to be around anyone, I remember we set up, you know, lawn chairs in the in the driveway, and I invited three other neighbors, and their husbands came over too, just because they were craving some sort of human interaction outside of their family. Um, so just being more creative in that has been helpful, but it's also um, it's also takes takes work and. Um, 
uh, you have to, you know, I don't know, plan it, you know, right. that's the trying harder, Mandy, that's trying yeah. harder. Now that's that same. You're right. It takes more energy. It takes more creativity. That's all in. I frame that as yes, it does. And, and, and we need to try harder. Mm-hmm. That's good. What are the boundaries <clears throat> that you want to talk about? What does that look like? Thank you. Boundaries. Um, uh, Boundaries are huge because we, uh, as myself, is doing too much. It is caretaking others. Um, so my boundaries of I have been saying yes, 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 yes. I'll take more clients. Yes, I'll see that friend. Yes, you know I can. I want to help everybody right now because we're all struggling. Um, and with that boundary is I'm absorbing others' feelings a lot more than I in in pre pandemic times. Um, so boundaries of knowing where am I today? Do I have the energy to do more, give more? And if I'm not to say no, to say, no, I can't do that because I am depleted and I have to learn how to do that in a more (laughs) frequent manner. Um, otherwise I crumble and I'm not in, and then I don't help anybody. So that's what happened the last week was that, is that I was not able to, not able to help anybody because I wasn't saying no and I was doing too much. So boundaries. How do you say that in a way, how do you say that in a way that someone doesn't feel like they're good enough for you to help them? Say that again. So if someone says, Hey, Naomi, I need your help. And I'm like, gosh, I just, I don't have the bandwidth. They may not feel like they're good enough for my help because I was able to help Mm -hmm. this person last week that they knew of. But at this time, I just don't have the bandwidth. So how do you have that? How do you say, I I mean, I guess it's, I love you. I just don't have the bandwidth right now, but that's hard in a time, especially with the pandemic, people need people. And if they're asking for help, it's hard to say, I'm sorry, I don't have it for you. It's true. It's hard to say, it's hard to say no. And as if you explain it as an act of self-care, an act of self-love, that I don't have it, I'm depleted, and I w- want to help you. I just today, I can't. Not today. Maybe tomorrow, once I do some of my own self-care, and I work and restore my energy, then I will have it to give. It's and not it's a permanent been, no, is what you're saying. When it's I not a permanent. Mm-hmm. That's right. Well said. It's not, it's not permanent. It's in the now. How am I in the same way of asking, how am I doing right now? Right now I'm depleted. So it takes vulnerability to admit I'm depleted. Therefore I don't have it to give to somebody else. So you have to admit that piece for whoever is asking that you're, you've not, you're not in a space to be able to help. So that takes courage, right? That takes vulnerability and saying no. I think that's, it has a lot to do, I think with work as well. As people are working, companies are working with less employees, the same amount of hours, and you have to be able to say, I can't do it and I don't have the bandwidth. And then you go home and you have just as much work at home. You have just as much work with the kids. And if you're working at home and you're doing homeschooling with your kids, you're doing double duty and you have to be able to say no. And as somebody who, you know, runs a company, I will tell you, you, we, you have, I'm saying your employers need to know your bandwidth and they need to know if you can and can't do it. And if they don't want to hear it, then you, you need to keep speaking your truth because, you know, you've got to be work and home. I think with, with boundaries, um, lately for me, um, for a while I was, you talked about, you know, the racial, um, struggles that we have going on right now. Um, for a while I was very vocal about that. And so people knew that. And so they continually want to call me or text me, um, or get together and talk about it. Mm -hmm. Um, and the same thing with, um, with the election and, and, you know, all the political race that we have going on right now. And even with COVID, it was just these conversations just kept going on and, homeschooling. and on. And you on. had a lot of homeschooling and questions. I had a lot of and people what to do with calling the kids. about homeschooling. So after a while, I just, I, I, I physically had to, I had to tell people, I, I can't talk about this topic anymore. Like, I'm sorry. It's not, and I felt horrible. Like I felt like I wasn't being an activist anymore. 
Um, and Naomi, you, you witnessed this the other night, we're having a zoom conversation, just, you know, getting together for a glass of wine. And my husband, husband came out to say hi. And it started, we started talking about, um, you know, the, the political candidates. And I said, I can't talk about this anymore. We have to change the subject. Mm -hmm. Um, so for me, for boundaries, I have to, I mean, it sounds, sometimes it sounds, you know, bitchy or something, but I've had to say, you know, I can't handle this topic anymore. Mm-hmm. So no, can that's we move good. on to something else? That's really good. I no, think that we. I had to do that as well and say, I can't, can we, I can't talk about this anymore. And that it, it I had to worry, you know, worry about it. Could it, was it, ma- did it make me worry about how that was going to affect somebody? Yes, it does. Cause I'm a people pleaser and I have to ground myself and talk to my other parts and say, it's okay that you say, no, I can't talk about this. And I can't talk about this anymore. Um, It doesn't make you less than as an activist or less than as a concerned citizen of this political climate. It means that you're recognizing depletion inside of yourself. Um, And it's not permanent. I think that's the key. Right. It's not permanent. And if you're someone people come to, Mandy, Naomi, I know people come to you. I know people come to me. So we're all three as like women who people come to for things. And it's a great modeling also to say, I can't do this today. Well, I think this Mm -hmm. is a really good um, opportunity for you to help us check in with ourselves. So what does that look like for our listeners and and what can we take home? When you, um, when you go into this, Laura, um, one thing you were talking about is checking in with yourself three times a day. I'd like to know how to do that. And I think you're going to tell us a little bit um, on how, how to do that. But also what I thought about is prompting our kids because I, I thought about that the other day. I'm like, do my kids need therapy? Like, I don't know what they're going through. They're going through the same thing I am, except they don't know how to, they don't have coping skills, you know? So, um, you know, as we go into this, this next portion, um, just, for myself and for other people with children to think about how you would help your kids to do the same thing. Yes. And that, that. And it's a great question. And, and that's what my concern has been as well is that kids who don't have the skills yet to learn balance inside of their own system, how can we teach them to learn balance inside and to know what we're even talking about. So with kids, for, let me just speak to that first, because I was talking to a girlfriend of mine about this, and we were talking about emotions and kids. And there is, um, there's an emotional expression chart that we found online, and it names, I mean, it had like 25 different emotions versus being curious, being stunned, being worried, really expansive rather than happy, sad, angry, mad. Um, so I would recommend that with kids is, is printing something like that out and showing them how many different th- I'm pensive right now. Um, I'm really proud of myself right now. So just helping them to get a more expansive language around emotions is one That's way. Great. Okay. Um, and in checking in, let me, uh, before we go into a meditation, can I speak to that piece around um, yes. how to yeah. check in Mandy to your question of how to check in is how am I right now? pause. It's a huge pause and it requires your breath, slowing things down as it, and we always have our breath. Here's the beautiful thing about doing self check-ins is our breath is a tool that is always with us, whether we're in our closets, whether we are anywhere alone, we always have our breath to access And I have been doing a lot of alternate nostril breathing, which Mandy, if you can put that in, I know you're awesome at this stuff with resources, um, Mm -hmm. alternate nostril breathing. We can put that in and ping that for people to look up or, um, as a technique, because I'm not skilled enough. It's really clumsy and you kind of get snot a little bit all over yourself, but it's really powerful, um, a tool to ground your energy and it requires you thinking, about the breath inwards and outwards, which is just incredibly calming. So being using a tool like that to create the pause, then you can start to notice how am I when you get to the place of pause, because then you can start to notice what do I need? Oh, wow, I'm exhausted. I'm depleted. I need, I need a nap. That's what I need right now. Or I am feeling sad. I'm feeling lonely. 
I need connection. I'm going to pick up the phone. I'm going to call someone. I'm going to Zoom someone. I'm going to text a friend and say, let's take a walk. Asking myself, what do I need? What do I need now? I need to journal. I need to meditate. I need to take a bath. I need to cry. Those are just a few. I need to exercise. I need to. It keeps going. But once you get the clarity, which I think, which I believe requires learning yourself inward, and it really becomes expansive inward learning yourself, because in this time of the pandemic, so many of our external variables, which usually fill us up, have been removed. So we can take this opportunity to go inward and get to know ourselves deeper and expand our own self energy inside. Mm -hmm. You mentioned a a closet. And I think for a lot of people who who are in their house with other people, they, um, they think, well, that sounds all well and good, but I don't have a place that's quiet for me to do this. And a closet, it works great bathroom, you know, somewhere. A toilet seat. Yeah, I'm anywhere. telling you, I spend longer going to the bathroom and I poop really fast. I'm in and out. My legs <laughs> are on the toilet. Like it comes out super quick. Oh I God. have tripled my time in the bathroom because I've realized that I can just sit there and I'm like, okay, I'm going to breathe. And last week when we had our conversation, Laura, what ended up coming out of my inner work and, re- and touching with my, you know, with my inner parts was I was worried. And I don't get worried. I don't recognize that feeling. That is not something I don't worry. Like I am nothing, but I'm worried about my mom because her husband died of 31 years. And I didn't recognize that. But as uh, as I was doing my work with Laura's going to show us, I was in tune with me and my feelings and was able to tap into that and recognize that. So I think that there might be feelings to what, shoot, I think the adults need the list of 25 feelings, right? Because we're experiencing things that we've never experienced before. And we can't go back, like you said, and go back and say, oh yeah, I felt this way, you know, five years ago. We've never been here before. We've never been trapped with, you know, without the exterior influences, like you said, and the people contact and all of that, our normal routine that helps us. So All right, Laura, floor is yours. And maybe the last thing I want to say about what you said about people say they don't have the time. That's part of the theme of we have to work harder. So if your Mm -hmm. first thing is I don't have the space is I need to work harder to create the space to know it's vital for my existence right now, honestly. Mm -hmm. So that first, the first go-to, I call that the first responder. The first responder is no, I can't. And I will challenge that to say, okay, now what? I can't is the first part that shows up. Is there another part that says I need to try harder now? I need to work harder now on my own self-care. So I need to look for that closet. I need to look for that toilet seat and figure out how to connect with myself. So I'm going to have in this way, I think if you guys want to just close your eyes so we can all... Mm -hmm. um, do this together as a way of pausing and learning how to pause and just take, take some breaths, take some deep breaths internally. And then you can exhale and start to play with how deep you can send your breath. Most of us do shallow breathing. See if you can push your breath further down past your breasts past your solar plexus, into your stomach. If you can, keep moving that breath further and further down. Start to get curious. Is there a sensation Where do you feel energy in your body? What are you noticing? Maybe it's rapid heart rate. Maybe it's a twang in your stomach. Maybe it's a pain in the back of your neck. Just let that part know you feel it. I like to put my hands on the area where I'm feeling the most energy, that energy can be tensioned, may feel uncomfortable. I like to put my hands there 
and just really let my system know I'm here, I'm available, I feel you. Just let your system know you're here. You're a resource to witness, to be curious, to hold space for. Don't forget to continue breathing. That expansiveness that we was talking about, the inner expansiveness can come from breath. And just let this part know what you're noticing. What part is most present inside of you? Is it a worried part? Is it an anxious part? Is it sad? Is it a part of you that needs to speak your truth? Is it in your throat chakra? Just let your parts know you're here. If your mind is really busy right now and there's other parts that are going, I can't, I won't, this is silly, just let those parts know they're welcome. This may be a first time you're even doing this kind of exercise and that's okay. All parts welcome is what we say. It's what we say in internal family systems, all parts welcome. The energy that we're cultivating by breath and curiosity and calm. This is our self-energy. We want to get more comfortable with our own self-energy. Let these parts, the ones that have been worrying, working so hard to please others, fixing things for everybody, Just let those parts know you appreciate them. You know how hard they're working. And you're going to ask them to step back a little bit so that you can be here now to create calm, to create energy, and maybe a little bit of peace. And if you're encountering a part that needs your time, that needs your energy, just let that part know that you see it and you feel it. And you're going to come back to it. Come back to it when you have more time. But the focus of right now is to be here now. To create more balance, which will give us the energy to have more boundaries, to stay healthy, to stay present, and ultimately create self-love. That was wonderful. That was really great. Thank you, Laura. You're welcome. Very good. Very good. I feel better. (laughs) calmer I should say well and that didn't take long and that's what's really important is it it doesn't it doesn't take long to connect it takes practice to connect and we need to give ourselves that because we're we need it we're worthy of it and we deserve it we all do and they could use this portion of the podcast check the time and if they need guidance if they need a guided inner healing, if they need a guided meditation, they can use this little snip Mm -hmm. to help. The biggest thing that Laura has taught me is there's no wrong way for self-care. You do what you can do and no judging yourself, no shaming yourself. You know, you can't hold yourself to somebody else's standards. All you can do is listen to yourself and 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 be accepting of all pieces and all parts that talk to you. You got it. And it's okay. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Thank you, Laura. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye-bye. 
Awesome. Bye. Thank Thank you. Bye. Yes.